Hello guys and welcome. This is a first video from a series where I'm going to start to show you how you can filter data efficiently and how we can decrease the amount of activities that you are using in the UiPath robot. I'll show you how you can get from a robot like this one. To this one. Yes, this robot does exactly the same thing. This is possible through a thing which is called language integrated query. And language integrated query is something that you can decrease the number of activities and it's much easy to test, to debug and easy to maintain. Now the power of this thing is that it allows to combine multiple sources, either if they are from Excel files, from emails, from files, from lists, for wherever they are and allows you to get to your particular data result. And doesn't matter if you're going to create an attended or unattended robot, definitely you need that. So without further ado, let me show you what it means. So I'm going to start with a definition. What is LINK? LINK is an acronym for Language Integrated Query. And it allows to filter or query data from various sources. And I'm going to enumerate just a few of them. They can be dictionaries, lists, and generally all the collection you can use query over them. You can use over the data tables, you can use over databases, uh, XML, and even JSON. Now, to make a comprehensive list of how many sources they have, anything which can implement I enumerable. And please write it down, this I enumerable, because we're going to encounter a lot in this section. And what this I enumerable means, I'm going to show you just here. So here we have the I enumerable in the middle and a list it's part of the I enumerable and also the dictionary is part of the enumerable. And I could add here on the data table, I could add an array. All of them, they have a common in I enumerable. And uh, all the operation which link performs, like finding the maximum, uh, what's the top, they operate over I enumerable. And this is something which I'm going to underline a lot and it's very important. So how can you write these type of queries? Well, you have two options. The first of all, uh, it will be using the assign activity and using the two, uh, you're going to write the collection that it will result. And in the from where it says enter the VB expression, you will write the link query there. Also, you have the second method using the invoke query. Now here there is a big query, as you can see, uh, when you have multiple queries and you want to group and you want to execute over them, uh, you can use this because it's much easy to read and it's much easy to uh, merge and to be easily visualizing. Actually, this type of query is part from the advanced challenge uh, where we have to result using multiple Excel data sources. If you want to see how I created this robot, there is a video on my YouTube channel where I'm going to explain step by step how I did that. So there are a couple of advantages. Using the assign activity, the big advantage is there is quick of use. However, uh, it works only for small queries. Now, it works for large queries, but there is hard to read. Also, you don't have the option to write in C sharp. You have the ability to write uh, queries only in the project language. And you know that you can specify the project language per each process. By default is VB. However, new version, you can say uh, C sharp, for instance, to Studio Pro licenses. However, if you're using the invoke code activity, uh, you can use uh, large queries that are easy to be read. Also, you can have uh, to choose between VB or C Sharp as a preference of choice, even if the project is uh, written in any language. You have the ability to write just for that particular query. And as a big disadvantage, you need to map all the parameters manually. Now, for instance, here, I'm gonna show you any field which you're having here, for instance, this executions, uh, this execution is a data table, you need to map uh, in the invoke query and all the fields you need to pass here. And there is no better way to see how we can use that link rather than see an actual example. And let's do that in the next video. Now let's have a look to the functions that we do have available in the language integrated query. So I have here a query uh, that I'm going to read uh, an Excel file in the customer's data table. So I'll show you how you can use a sign. And I'm going to write here in the VB expression, uh, the data table that is available, it's named customers. Now for Excel spreadsheet, in order to convert a data table to something that it can be I enumerable, and 
I, I will tell you that we're gonna use a lot of uh, this notion I enumerable. You can convert to as enumerable. And as you can see here, this only takes a source at the data table and returns an enumerable row collection, which means that this will convert the data table itself to a collection of rows. And it will take all of these rows. By the way, this is the Excel file, which I'm gonna use it here as an example. So we have here as an enumerable, and I'm gonna open the advanced editor. I'm gonna close the parentheses, and then we do have a bunch of functions. Now, all of these functions we can use as long as we have an enumerable. So for instance, we can check for all the element they match a condition or any element match a condition, or we can uh, um, append to this collection another type of collection. Um, we can do check if the contains, if contains uh, something in this collection. For instance, we can use that to find a certain element or we could count. For instance, if we're gonna look to the elements uh, by this column, by the first name, we could get the distinct number of uh, first names, which are here. We can join, uh, we can get the last element, and I invite you to have a look to all of these elements. Some of them we're already using here in this chapter. Now, as an exercise, I want to show you how we can use the mix and min, because uh, these are the most simple from here. So for instance, you have here uh, the customer's DT, which by the way is this data table. And I like to get the maximum uh, of certain column. I'm gonna pick just the first name. So I'm gonna copy the first name, copy. And I'm gonna open a parenthesis. And the way how you do that, it's called a selector. Now a selector, it's a function that it will receive a data table and it return a double or um, an integer, a double, a single, a float. As you can see, there are a bunch of overloads. We have 12 overloads. So what we need to do, I'm gonna use, use a function. And then I'll use this function to have a parameter. Now the parameter, I'll name it row because um, this collection, it will be called with each row. So I'm gonna use a function and then this is a data table, which I can use a row. Uh, so I can get the row, then I can have the field. And I'm gonna just uh, name the field will be first name. And because I want to convert, I know that this field it's as a string, as a text, I'm gonna grab of string. Okay, and then I'm gonna retrieve uh, this field. If I'll just leave it empty, it will determine the maximum by the first name. Uh, but I don't know if it will be by the length or by the sorting order. So what I want to do, uh, I want just to grab the length of each element. So I'm gonna just put length and I'm gonna press okay. So that should be it. Now uh, I need to tell her this will, it will return a length. So the length it's integer, which means that this function, it will return an integer. Uh, and actually, you, if you go with the mouse, uh, it accepts a data row and uh, it returns an integer. So here I need to put my integer. I'm gonna create a variable and I'm gonna just name it max using a variable. I'll change the maximum to integer. And that should be all. Now I'm gonna just display this with the right line. Actually, I'm gonna use the log message. So log message, trace, and I'm just gonna display the maximum. So let's hit and see what the result will be. I'm gonna just close this Excel. And we have eight. Now the maximum length of the characters here, it's eight. As we can see here, we have four characters. Now let's try to modify this to the minimum. And hit okay. Hit a run. And right now we have a four. So that's an overview of the language integrated query functions. Now, if you haven't understood this function or if you find this strange, let me explain in the next video. This is a small introduction of what Link does. And if you want to learn how to can be able to create the robot, which I have shown you at the beginning of the video, I do have a course 
where I'm taking you from zero to be able to create those robots and to decrease to that amount of activities. Check out the description video below. I'm Daniel and until the next time, see you soon. Bye.